Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we got an interesting topic for you guys, and you definitely want to stick around and hear some of the things I got to say, because I got a lot that I want to say, and also what Kendrick Perkins had to say. So make sure you go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the like button on this video. So anyway, let me get into this topic here. So it seems as if Ben, this whole Ben Simmons news is just kind of like, you know, it blew up again yesterday, right? We were all kind of sitting there dormant. We had done a bunch of videos on it. I had made my thoughts clear about how I think he's one of the laziest basketball players I've ever seen or I've seen in a very long time come through the NBA, especially the player at that caliber, with that, with that level of raw talent to be this lazy and somebody that just refuses to improve his basketball game. I think he's one of the laziest players we got going today in the NBA. It's something I used to say. I used to rub a lot of people wrong. And guess what? I still don't care because it's exactly what I believe. But yesterday, Adrian Wojnarowski of ESPN, he broke a story, right? And we even covered this. He broke a story and the news was that Ben Simmons said he will definitely not report to training camp, the Philadelphia 76ers training camp, and he intends to never, ever, 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 ever play a game for the Philadelphia Sixers ever again. And it seems like as if that news was the straw that broke the camel's back because it seems like as if that was a tipping point for everybody yesterday. The moment that news came out, it was like a whirlwind and all of a sudden everybody started to have something to say about the Ben Simmons situation. And a lot of people took issue uh, with that news, including me. We did a live yesterday at about a 20 minute live where we just kind of gave our raw opinions on it. And I noticed even in the comments section uh, after that video, a lot of people, a lot of people just 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 judging from some of the comments that people were leaving. It's like people have people have had it up to here with this guy. Right. People are like, OK enough is enough like i think some people will try to give them the benefit of the doubt they were like wait a minute maybe this maybe that but now i think people are beginning to smell you know smell the roses and realize that this dude is on a completely different level when we're talking about diva and delusion uh just being delusional uh when we're talking about an nba uh an nba player i mean i haven't seen something like this in quite some time a player at this level with this with this level of talent to be behaving like this is something that's just unbelievable. And I think the guy, listen, I think he's acting like a baby because Ben Simmons has basically said he refuses to look in the mirror and he will not improve no matter what people are saying. Right now, he has backed himself in a corner. And basically, from what I'm understanding from some of the decisions and moves that he's been making, it seems as if he's taken a position that, listen, this is not my fault. I'm a victim here. Everybody's doing this to me. And, you know, you know, um, everybody's wrong and I'm right. That's basically what it seems to be, um, you know, th 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 that's basically what it seems to be the situation with this guy. And he's acting as if somebody said this yesterday in the comments section, like not cracked up. The guy made a good point. He's like, he's acting like as if make people are making up these stats. He's acting like as if people are just fabricating these numbers, like we're just sitting somewhere and we're just forging these numbers on his records. Like, no, these numbers are real. And yesterday, it seems as if, you know, people are, you know, it seems as if uh, maybe one of his supporters or maybe a player friendly type of guy in Kendrick Perkins yesterday on ESPN, he was on the show with just in with Max Kellerman, this just in with Max Kellerman. And it looks like as if even Kendrick Perkins has had enough with this whole Ben Simmons situation. And he made his thoughts clear on the entire situation. So before I go too far, what we want to do for you guys is we want to play a clip of some of the things that Kendrick Perkins had to say, then we're going to analyze some of the things that he discussed. And then ultimately, we're going to give our closing arguments uh, on this topic. So before we go too far, take a listen to some of the things that Kendrick Perkins had to say about this whole uh, Ben Simmons situation. Take a listen to that here. <laughs> Big Perk, what's your reaction to the news that Ben Simmons wants out of Philly? Well, I, I told the world this about three weeks ago, Max, that he was not, he was willing not to show up to training camp and not to report to Philly, period. But here, here it is, right? Look, Philly played a part in this, and so did Ben Simmons with his lack of production on the floor. And now he's forcing Philly hand. But here's the thing. Philly don't have to trade Ben Simmons right now. Like, they are still a top-five team in the Eastern Conference without Ben Simmons. So they can hold out, wait till something comes about throughout the course of the season that they may like, and then they trade them. But... Ben Simmons is going to lose money, which bothers me because at the end of the day, I always tell all players that come in to the NBA, don't give your lettuce back, okay? Show up, be a true professional. They had guys before you that paved the way for you to be making, you know, 30 plus million dollars a year. 
And it's your job as a player to make sure you upheld and do the same for the upcoming guys that's coming beneath you. Now, in that soundbite, I, listen, I think it's rich that this dude, Kendrick Perkins says, he says he he's bothered by the fact that Ben Simmons is going to lose money. He said it's something that bothers him. And guess what? I don't think Ben Simmons is bothered at all. I don't think Ben Simmons cares at all all and the reason i don't think he cares i have two major reasons that i think that this guy doesn't give a bleep about losing this money um we we we, we did a video about five six days ago we, we got an article from uh fox news fox sports we got that article from there and they were saying they're, they're, they're probably going to charge uh, find him three hundred thousand and three hundred and eight thousand dollars a day then now today i'm hearing it's 225 whatever it is it's above 200 and something thousand dollars 200 300 it's a lot of money right that's a lot of money. That's like if okay, it's hundred thousand dollars a day. That's what three million a month, two, two to six million a month. It's a lot of money, right? If it's if if uh, if an, if it's an, if if it's in that case, seven million. It's, it's it's a lot of money, right? But here are the reasons why I think Ben Simmons really doesn't care about uh doesn't doesn't really care about losing this money. I think um when you grow up, I think when pe people that grow up, um you know with a lot of money around them, right? Who grew up in rich families and all of these different things and are you know come from very privileged lives i think a lot of these people not all of them not all of them definitely not all of them but a lot of them um they don't seem to value money especially people that are around money at a very early age in their life when you're around money at a very early age you don't have any sense of the value of it because it's normal to you you just you grow up into it so things around you everything is normal you don't you don't know what it feels like uh, you know, to to make money because you you have it, it's there already. I think those are the first people, and the second people that I that I believe don't value money are people that make money very very quickly. If you make money very 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 fast, you're not going to value it. I think people that make money a little bit slower tend to value things. For example, if the NBA implemented a rule, and I'm not saying they should at all, right? Or matter of fact, let me not use that example. Let's say you're a parent. And let's say you're pretty well off. Let's say you're let's say you're rich. Whatever you have, whatever rich is in your mind. Let's say you're that, right? And let's say you're 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 one of your kids turns 16 years old, and you say, you know what? No, no, not 16. Let's say 14. And you know, you probably want to get him a cell phone or whatever it is. And you say, you know what? I'm going to start giving you pocket money, like allowance money, pocket money. And it's like, yeah, great, great, great. Okay, okay how, how much are you going to give me? And you go like, you know, I'm going to give you 70 bucks a month. And the guy goes, 70 bucks? Like, yeah, 70 bucks. He's like, that's all. Yeah, yeah, that's all. He's like, I'm like, what bills do you have? What are you doing? Where are you going? Like, what responsibility? No, give you 70 bucks, get out of my face, right? And then when they get to 16 or 16 years old, you say, you know what? Okay, now you're in, you're still in high school. That I'm going to I'm gonna make it 100 bucks a month, right? And they're like, but daddy, you're rich. You're like, yeah, but it has nothing to do with me. My money has nothing to do with you, right? And then when they get to college, obviously, when they go, you start giving them increment. And then when they probably get to 21, if you have a lot of money, maybe you start giving them you know, maybe they graduate college, but you still want to give them some money. Maybe you give them a few thousand dollars a month, right? Once they have that small amount of money, they know they're not rich, but they, and, and they know there's more money they can get out there, but they'll start to manage that money better. But if you start crediting your children's account with 20,000, 30,000, $40,000 a month, then they're not going to value any money at all because they don't have to work for money anymore because it's given to them easily. So I think those are the people that really don't value money. If you look at the situation with Ben Simmons, Ben Simmons was drafted in the NBA in the first round. I think it was the first pick in 2016, right? 2016. That basically means that Ben Simmons became a millionaire 20. From what I understand, Ben Simmons' father was a professional basketball player in Australia. I take it that Ben Simmons grew up pretty well. And then if you could become a millionaire 20, think about your life. People that are watching this video, maybe you're 25, 30, 35. Think about just how short of a period it is, 20 years, like from when you were born to 20. It's so short, right? The only people that think it's long are people that have yet to get to 20 years old or just past 20. They're like, man, this, this race has been going on forever. Like life is long, right? But when you get to like 25, 30, like, man, that was, whew, whew, that was, that was nothing. When you think about that at that age, if you become a millionaire at that age, for you to be a self-starter, a motivated person at 20 years old, it takes a lot. Right. And if you've been given things at a very early age, it's very hard to value things. And I think this is the situation that's going on with him. Right. Ben Simmons doesn't have any value. So when they talking about blowing 200 grand a day, it means nothing to him. This guy's been a millionaire since he was 20. 
It means nothing to him. The, the concept of, oh my God, I'm losing 200 means nothing because of how things work. You In the NBA, you can go from coming from a very poor family and then overnight, literally, and overnight, we're talking about three, four years, depending on how long you play basketball, whatever, et cetera, to becoming a multimillionaire, right? Signing a 20, $30 million, $100 million contract. Look at LaMelo Ball, right? He just signed, I think, an $80, $90 million contract. That's how it works, right? So I think those are one of the reasons there. I think Kendrick Perkins talks about the fact that it may affect future, future players after him. I don't think Ben Simmons cares about that whatsoever. I don't think Ben Simmons is even factoring any of that. But anyway, after going through this Kendrick Perkins thing, it caused me to do a little bit more research on Ben Simmons numbers. And and after d discovering some of these numbers, it 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 it, it it's it, it makes the situation even more confounding that this guy feels as if he has the nerve to feel as if he is somehow a victim and people are doing this thing to him. Let me give you guys some of Ben Simmons some more stats from Ben Simmons. Do you know, for his career, Ben Simmons is a 60% free throw shooter. 60%, right? He's only made five threes in his NBA career. And think about this, guys. He's, he's making 14.7% of his three-pointers for his career. A point guard in the NBA, career average from a three-point line in the modern NBA is 14.7% points per game but it gets worse right it gets worse he's a zero percent three-point shooter for his career in the playoffs zero for his playoffs for the, his playoff career he's averaging 14 points per game and he's a 50 percent think about this a 50 percent free throw shooter in the playoffs for his career this is the guy that some people are out there defending this is unconscionable that you have a player like this in the nba that is making this amount of money putting up these type of stats and feeling like as if he's like the dawn or something this is what we're talking about these numbers are in a skew. You can't defend these. These numbers are not even they're offensive. They're offensively bad. It's like offensive. Like, how did the NBA produce? Like, it's unbelievable when you go through this guy's stats and 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 people are talking about, oh, you know, he needs to change the situation and this and the Max Kellerman made a good point. He's like, so what's going to happen? You're going to trade Ben Simmons and on the way to the next destination, he's going to all of a sudden learn how to shoot like what do you. Whatever team he goes to is going to inherit this problem and he's not going to improve ever. You know how I know Ben Simmons will never improve because now he just after this entire situation, it looks as if he's given himself the justification to not improve. He has decided that I am not the problem. It's everybody else. It's my environment. It's the organization. It's the fans. It's the media. It's not me. Right. It's as if like all of these people are the ones that are responsible for these stats. Right. They're the ones that are responsible for these stats. What's going to happen is he's going to go to the next destination and it's going to just stay the same. I don't see an improvement. So these are my thoughts. I think uh, in regards to what Kendrick Perkins says, I don't think Ben Simmons really gives a damn. I don't. So these are my thoughts and opinions. Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Again, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we drop our comment. Once again, this is Charles here from uh, whenever we drop our uh, videos. Once again, this is Charles here from Jimmy's Pro. Wish you guys an amazing day. Catch you guys in the next episode.